Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Okay, great. So today we're very pleased to have Dmitry Kovratovich visiting us from University of Luxembourg, and he'll speak to us on the cryptanalysis of the full AES. Thank you. So today I will talk about results on the full advanced encryption standard block cipher. This work was made in the University of Luxembourg together with Professor Alex Birkov and my colleague Ivica Nikolic. And I will uh, shortly introduce you into the cryptanalysis in, of block ciphers and uh, give uh, an overview of our attack on the full AES. And of course, feel free to interrupt me during the talk because maybe some uh, notation can maybe I'm maybe not familiar with all the notation or with anything else. So if you have questions, feel free to ask them immediately. So first several words about block ciphers, just generally. So we have a typically block cipher as a function of two arguments, the key, which is typically secret, and the plain text that is going to be encrypted on this key. And uh, typically, the encryption function is a permutation, of course, because you have to produce a cipher text that uh, you will have to de decrypt in the deterministic way back to the plain text itself. So of course, this uh, permutation e that I depict here by E, it should be bijective. And uh, in order the block cipher to be useful for practical applications, of course, there should be, it should be efficiently computed, this permutation. And uh, as Claude Chanon note quite far ago, the permutation itself should provide uh, high diffusion and uh, high confusion of plain text and the key in order that uh, the resultant ciphertext provide no information about uh, neither the plain text nor the key. And uh, enemies cannot uh, get any information from the ciphertext. But uh, given the key, it, it should be efficiently invertible and uh, produce the right plain text. So first of all, again, uh, several words about attack models to work with. Because of course, given this permutation and given many practical applications, you have uh, many models that uh, are related to different applications where block, cipher, block ciphers are used. So attacks can be passive or active because uh, you may have access to the encryption device and ask it uh, in some way to encrypt the plain texts that you want. Or maybe even you have access to the decryption device the, and you uh, may be able to ask him to decrypt some cipher text that you prepare in, adv uh, in advance. and. Uh, given information from this encryption and decryption, you may try to recover the key and to decrypt available information that was encrypted and or will be encrypted later. The number of keys can be also important because uh, it was figured out that, uh, different, that several encryption systems are vulnerable. If you know that uh, different encryption devices in which keys are different but related with uh, good related functions, if you consider the system of two encryption devices, they are more vulnerable to attacks. And uh, these attacks are called related key attacks, where this, uh, the keys are related by the function, uh, typically chosen by an adversary. And of course, you can um, consider, you can view a cipher just as a transformation and investigate its properties of the permutation and investigate how is it good as a permutation? And uh, you can uh, consider it not as a function with a secret parameter, 
but even as, as a function with a, a known parameter. For example, you can fix a key and just look at this permutation from uh, one uh, from 16, uh, which converts 16 bytes to 16 bytes, and look at the properties of this permutation. And ideally, it should provide uh, the same properties. It should not provide any good properties that uh, uh, may be used for future attacks, and you should not distinguish this permutation for just a randomly chosen permutation. And of course, this model is uh, weaker and uh, called open key model, and we will consider uh, AES in both models. And, see, and uh, I will tell that in the open key model, AES uh, is much more vulnerable, and even some practical properties can be shown for AES in this open key model. So typical attacks on uh, typical key recovery attacks, because key recovery is the primary goal of most of the attacks on block ciphers, typically deals with so-called distinguishers. You first have to find some property it's, uh, marked by P here, which is uh, traced to some proper another property P prime with uh, more or less high probability. And maybe it's not even for the uh, full cipher, but only to the fir uh, it works f only to for the first part of the cipher. And t a typical attack may work as follows. So you uh, choose these properties, you encrypt many plain texts with properties P, then you get many cipher texts, then you guess a part of the last subkey and try to partially decrypt the resultant cipher texts, and uh, among the resultant states, internal states, you try to uh, check if there are sufficiently many states with the, properties P with the property P prime, because if there are uh, sufficiently many, that it means that you correctly guessed this part of the last subkey, and then you, that you indeed computed the cipher execution in the backward direction, and uh, this means that you get information about the key. While if, you, if your guess was wrong, that means that you computed not the state in the backward direction, but some just computed something more or less random, and you should get no information. So the number of states with this property P prime should be the same as uh, in the random distribution. Many attacks with uh, this, uh, with the use of distinguisher, are so-called differential attacks when you trace differences, not the properties of the plain text, not the properties of the states but difference between plain text. So here, by P, we mark a difference between plain text P1 and P2 as delta P, and uh, the property P prime will be the fixed difference between ciphertext, delta C. The, it's uh, very useful because uh, the differences can be traced through any linear operation with, uh, as we say, probability 1, and only nonlinear operation will change this difference in a non-deterministic way. But on the other hand, nonlinear operations are more expensive in hardware and in software, and that's why designers try to implement as few linear oper nonlinear operations as possible. And if these nonlinear operations are bad uh, in the terms of, uh, differ uh, of differential probability, then you may, might be able to attack the full cipher. And uh, I will explicitly use differential probabilities of uh, single elements of the scheme. I will, unfortunately, I have not prepared the slides for it, but the idea is uh, that we have a function that uh, the byte function that converts or any function that converts uh, domain x to domain y. And we investigate differential properties of this function. It means we compute probabilities that uh, we can, if uh, the input of the functions are related with the difference delta, what is the probability that the resulting difference is delta prime. And we computed for a AES nonlinear nonlinear functions, and we know that actually in AES there is only one nonlinear function, and uh, the maximal probability for the non-zero differences 
2 to the minus 6. And uh, this is the fact that uh, will be used in the computation of complexity of our attack. So now it's time to introduce AES, Advanced Encryption Standard, that was designed in uh, 1997 and was uh, submitted to the competition, to the AES competition, it was named Raindal at that time. It has a 128-bit block, and uh, I will explicitly use pictures in uh, my uh, few further slides. And uh, as you may see, this 128-bit block is represented as a byte matrix, 4 times 4, so 16 squares. And uh, on this picture are represented two rounds of AES, because AES is an iterative function, consists of almost uh, of identical rounds, and the number of rounds depends on the version, depends on the key size. And uh, here are three rounds, and every round uh, is every round starts with uh, the addition of the key, of the calls, of the addition of the subkey. Then uh, a nonlinear, the only nonlinear operation sub bytes is applied to the whole internal state. It's applied bytewise. That's why I introduced the bytewise function and its differential properties. And after that, two linear operations are applied, and we don't need uh, many details about it. And uh, the number of rounds is 10 for 128-bit key version, 12 for 192, and 14 for 256. And uh, we attack, uh, most of our attack deal with higher versions uh, of the key uh, of AES with uh, larger keys 192 and 256 bit. So I will say several words about uh, cryptanalysis timeline uh, because I would like to show how the, uh, the cryptanalysis results progressed. You may see that uh, first we consider 128-bit version. And uh, the first attack was on six rounds proposed by the designers, Jon Diamond and Vincent Raymond, on six rounds in uh, the year of the submission. So they attacked with... Uh, more or less practical complexity, six out of 10 rounds. And uh, in their submission, they said, okay, we can attack six out of 10 rounds. And we say that this is okay. So the four rounds, as security margin, we think that they will not be broken during the time when uh, AES will be in use. And indeed, as you may see, so, uh, the attack on seven rounds will, was proposed shortly afterwards, but actually there is no progress in the cryptanalysis of AES since that time, only the complexities were a bit lowered, and uh, the first four attacks are in the single key, in the secret key model, when the key is secret and is fixed, and that's uh, the model, the most popular among the real applications, and you see that in real applications, AES is still, AES-128 is still as secure as it was nine years ago. And only when we can fix the key and consider the permutation, the AES permutation as is, with the fixed key as a parameter, which we know, that uh, some, uh, the same number of rounds can be attacked with more practical complexity. But again, the full 10-round uh, ten, uh, ten version, yes? What does it mean attacking a file when the key is known? What is there to attack? Because that, <laughs> the attack is to find properties of the permutation that are, there shouldn't exist in a good permutation, in a random permutation. Because ideal cipher should be, uh, implemented with a permutation which should provide you diffusion and confusion of the plain text and the key. And if you have permutation with some bad properties that may not immediately lead to an attack, might not immediately lead to an attack, but in future, the properties of this permutation may lead to <coughs> some bad. And it's a signal to a weakness in the design. So of course they are uh, this attack cannot be immediately applied, but they show the directions, the future directions of the research. They show what, where designers made mistakes. And uh, in the related key model, when the keys are related by a function chosen by an adversary, uh, no better results. I uh, tell about it explicitly because the related key model is the model when we will attack AES 
on the further slides. With the 192-bit version situation is a bit different. The same attack on six rounds because it was independent on the key size was proposed by the designers in the very beginning. And soon later it was improved uh, up to eight rounds in 2000, eight out of 12. And again, no better results were proposed in the single key model up to now. So, so far, so still eight rounds out of uh, 12 can be attacked with the single key model. And in the related key model, we have a bit better results. So a 10 round attack was proposed uh, four years ago, and uh, Orr was one of the authors. And uh, we uh, later improved uh, this year uh, the attack uh, up to, uh, we can attack now the full AS192, but again in this related key model and with the complexity that is still astronomical. And the practical attacks still work, uh, the more or less practical attacks on 192-bit version are still uh, in the open key or known key model. And with uh, 256, which has 14 rounds, station is more or less similar. So eight rounds can be attacked the same eight rounds can be attacked in the single key model, and uh, the same ten rounds can uh, were attacked uh, before our papers with uh, quite high complexity. And uh, we have recently introduced two attacks on AES-256. The first one is the so-called chosen key multi-collisions, uh, which works, uh, which is mounted is uh, quite unrealistic model, but the complexity is almost practical, and we can even provide some some certificates and uh, in a more realistic uh, model with the related keys the attack is uh, um, slower and we can attack the same 14 rounds with complexity about 2 to the 99. And this will be the subject of this talk as well. So why AES? Uh, was and is still very secure because its internal transformations were designed very, very well. So they provide indeed fast diffusion, high nonlinearity, and it's really hard to construct good differentials for more than three, for four, five rounds. It's hard to construct an attack that I uh, talked in the very beginning with this distinguisher because if you cannot construct a good property for four and five rounds and your goal is to attack 10, 12, or 14, of course, you have a very good security margin. But that's for internal transformations. But this is not for the key schedule, which runs in parallel to the internal transformations. And actually, as we figured out, the designers just uh, um, put uh, less efforts on the design of the key schedule. And that's why we can exploit the properties of the key schedule. Of course, if the key is still fixed, we cannot do it. But uh, if key is not fixed, uh, then uh, there are properties in the key schedule that we exploit. So the related key model that uh, will be used in our attack, uh, again, I recall that uh, the, fir the key that we are going to recover is unknown to us. But we can encrypt and decrypt. So we assume that we have an access to an encryption and decryption device. If we just do not know the key. But we know uh, we can encrypt not only on key, on k, but also on k prime, which is uh, computed as a function of k. Of course, function k should be more or less realistic, because uh, well, if you want to apply this related key attack in some application, then uh, there should be a way to obtain this pair of keys. Well, we know that there is a practical related key attack on the wireless protocol web which was designed uh, due to, uh, with the help of the related key attack on the si stream cipher RC4. But uh, the, there was only a small error introduced uh, in, the, so the keys used, uh, the key pair that was used in the attack on RC4, uh, the relation was quite strong and most of the bytes were actually the same. And we can hope that uh, in real applications, uh, we hope that in real applications, uh, we can maybe flip some bits. Uh, 
we can uh, maybe uh, we can flip some bits or we can change one, two, three bytes and uh, to get uh, in order to get a related key. And in AES, since the key is uh, quite large, we can use this uh, key difference uh, as, uh, as a source of freedom and maybe we can construct uh, better differentials with uh, the use of key difference. And uh, the idea of our attack was to exploit in more optimal way this freedom and uh, the, we, constructed the better we constructed better differential trails and that's uh, why and that's how we mount Yes, uh, it, uh, it, it's going to be published at Asia Crypt, but the, the version that is uh, on ePrint, the attack complexity is a bit higher because we later updated it. Uh -huh. Maybe we didn't, pub we didn't update the ePrint version, but on our website, this complexity is, I remember. So you have posts on the website to update? Yes, yes, I think. What were the ideas that we used uh, in the attack of AES? So the main idea that we used was the idea of a local collision because actually the attack started when we tried to attack AES as a hash function. And uh, when I attacked AES as a hash function, I, I knew that many hash functions uh, were broken with the help of local collisions. And the first attack on SHA-0 in 98 was attacked with the local collision. So called the local collisions works as follows. So here the scheme of SHA-0 with the uh, internal states of five 32-bit words. So here are six rounds, and on the right, uh, there are six message blocks, and these uh, red lines are differences in particular bits. And you see that injecting differences in six consecutive message words in particular positions, we can get the following situation. So we start with the zero difference in the very beginning, and then we inject, we just flip one bit in the message word, and uh, it affects one, one internal state word after one round, then we prevent this different difference from expansion on uh, more words. So we correct one, uh, we correct uh, it uh, a bit with the next message word, and uh, again we, we correct, uh, we correct, we correct, and after the difference appear in the leftmost internal state word, we can completely cancel it with the last uh, message injection. So we have uh, a pattern which uh, involves six message words and we start and end with zero difference in the internal state. So what we get, we actually get a collision for this uh, six rounds of SHA-0. The problem is that for the full SHA-0, the, me the message blocks are not independent. If they were, we would just uh, use this pattern as is, as a single one. But for SHA, since we have, a message, we have message schedule and one message word is used several times, we have many local collisions. So one local collision immediately generates another local collision in, in further rounds. And uh, since message schedule is linear and there is uh, almost no diffusion in this message schedule, all the local collisions are just translated as in geometry to further rounds. And if we construct a local collision in uh, the first rounds, uh, they will just appear several local collisions in the further rounds. And as uh, every local collision has its probability up to uh, from two to the minus three to one, depending on the round index, then uh, the number of local collisions will uh, uh, determine the probability of this differential pattern and that's and thus the, prob the complexity of the attack. So you, uh, the simplest attack would be just to try many different, many message uh, pairs with the f this fixed difference determined by the local collisions and uh, with the fixed probability you will get a collision. So the first attack, this quite simple, was uh, two to the 60. Uh, so the, and the number of local collision collisions was about 25 or 30 and just uh, you have to, to compute the complexity, you just uh, compute two to the minus three in the power of the number of local collisions. And well, some of them have better probability and the first one can be treated in a better way. That's why we, you get an attack with complexity to the, two to the 60, which is uh, 
faster than the simplest Birdy paradox attack. And uh, when we looked in, at AES as a hash function, we uh, key for us was a message and the uh, internal state for the internal state. But for AES, the situation is a bit different. So the single local collision is constructed in a very similar way. So we start with a zero difference in the internal state. And this is the this is AES-256. AES-256 and uh, this uh, two squares on the right, there are, uh, they are two parts of the 256-bit subkey. So the left part and the right part. And the idea is to have only one by difference here. It's XORed to the zero difference state and you will have a zero difference before this nonlinear sub-bytes operation. Then during the sub-bytes, uh, uh, as boxes that are in the sub-bytes layer, transform this message, dif uh, transform this one by difference. But we know that with probability 2 to the minus 6, it's transformed to the difference by difference that we need. We marked it with blue. So we know that with probability 2 to the minus 6, the pink difference is converted to blue difference. And the blue difference expands with probability 1 through linear operations to gray column difference. And uh, if it happens, then adding the same difference, the same gray deal difference in the leftmost column of the second part of the subkey, we can completely cancel it and, and get the zero difference in the end. So we get the same local collision. And the question is actually what, to, what will happen after and before because you have key schedule and nobody knows uh, whether we can construct these local collisions in the forward or in the backward direction. The idea of the design of the key schedule uh, was to avoid constructing these good differential patterns in the forward direction. But I will show that in the backward direction it's, yes? Show that in the backward direction it's easier. So here the scheme of the key schedule of AES 256. So this is 256-bit key, 32 bytes, split it for simplicity to two parts, left and right. And so this are source, um, byte-wise. These are byte-wise operations. Uh, and these are two S-boxes, two nonlinear transformations. The idea is uh, first to transform the rightmost column XOR it to the leftmost column and get uh, the leftmost column of the next subkey. And then the new column is XOR to the second column of the first key and uh, produce the second column of the next subkey. Then is again used and so on and so on and pass through S box till the very end. And you see that uh, it should provide good diffusion in the forward direction. So if you change something in the first subkey, it will affect all the next columns. Indeed. So assume we have a, zero a non zero difference in only one byte in this right, mo right corner, that it will pass through two S box, it will first pass through this S box, it will affect, and due to rotation, it will affect the lower byte here. And uh, since uh, all the difference here are zero, uh, the same difference will appear in the next three bytes. Then it will pass through another S box and we completely lose information about this difference because uh, we have two to the, two to the seven, 127 uh, variants of this green difference and even more variants of this light blue difference. And indeed, so one byte difference affects eight bytes in the next subkey. That was the idea of the key schedule. But if we try to show in the backward direction, Look at the difference at, at this key, at this byte. The idea is, since we computed the subkey from left to the right, <coughs> then we have then we compute the previous subkey from right to the left. And uh, since the rightmost columns have zero difference, the rightmost column of the first subkey will have zero difference as well. And we compute, 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 till we reach uh, the effect of uh, the first column. And actually. It will, 
affect only two columns, only two bytes actually. And every inverted round will affect only one more byte because the diffu you may see that diffusion in the backward direction is much slower. Uh, it was noted in the first, uh, one of the first paper on the cryptanalysis of AAS, but it was not used uh, together with the idea of local collision. But this, will, this idea will show how the local collisions will behave in the backward and forward direction. Getting more, uh, computing more rounds backwards, we have. Uh, Sorry, this is back to you. Did you use to do all those operations in the reverse order? Before, yes. Like, after that, so. Yes. Yes, because it's uh, uh, bijective. So all the S boxes are bijective. Adding constant is bijective. XOR is uh, bijective if you fix one of its arguments. So, because, so you first compute this column. So if you have to compute what is this arrow. And to compute this arrow, you have to, so you know the result of this XOR. You actually know what's here. You know what is here. So you know two arguments of XOR. So you know the result of the XOR and you know one argument of the XOR. And you know that both of them have zero difference. So the input of the XOR has zero difference as well. Yeah, no, I mean, but at yeah. the very end, so at the, what is the last thing that you do with the other XOR? Do you have to do it the, last the very last, the very last I compute, so I already computed this column. So I compute this in the same direction as in forward, as forwards. But uh, here will be zero as well. And uh, 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 this, uh, here we have uh, uh, difference in one byte. And it will kept because uh, we have only one XOR on our path. And uh, this argument is 0. Yes? Would it be fair to say that the original sin was making the key schedule a bijective so it can be run backwards? Uh, well, if you did things like Davis Meyer, or you know, all those things that that make it non-bijective, you couldn't, you wouldn't be able to run it backwards. Well, you could make sure. a messier bijective key schedule. Sorry, you could make a messier bijective key schedule. But if it's bijective, there is a constructive proof it's bijective, and you can run it backwards. So station is quite nice while we compute it, it, say, three rounds up. Because uh, every round of the key schedule, because the key is twice as large as the internal state, is actually two rounds of the internal transformation, of the internal AES. And this four sub keys correspond to eight rounds of AES. So we get a very nice pattern for eight rounds out of 10, 12, 14, out of 14. And for S, 192 is quite similar. So the strategy for constructing our differential pattern will be to start from the uh, last subkey and compute it uh, backward as far as possible. Well, this is for uh, this is pattern for uh, so-called disturbance in the local collisions, the byte that you inject. And the same, the same more or less will be for uh, the column, for these gray columns that you cancel is for the cancellation. And differential trail is compute, computed as follows. So the first local collision, the simplest one we arrange in the, not in the last round, but in the la round before the last, in the round 13. The same picture as I showed you. Uh, one active S box and every active S box because we choose the differential pair pink and blue with the highest possible probability to the minus six. One active S box will give you probability to the minus six for the whole pattern. Then you add, uh, because there will be no active S box in the next round, you will add just half of the key schedule round 
and we'll have a fixed difference in the ciphertext. So we have already a pattern for two rounds with the same one S box. And now the ti it's time to compute it in the backward direction. So as this pink difference expands to two pink difference, the gray column expands to two gray column differences. And we had one local collision here, and we have two local collisions here that are adjacent. We have three S boxes, probability two to the minus six to the three for four rounds. Then uh, local collisions uh, are now one, by, uh, there is one byte gap between them. So for six rounds, we have five active S boxes. But for, uh, for larger number of rounds, situation uh, becomes worse because it's time to, me to pass through S boxes in the key schedule. And our local collisions might uh, stop be local collisions because uh, there were good pairs of difference, pink and gray. And after they will pass through S boxes, they will become something uh, we don't uh, undeterministic. And uh, we have to force uh, situation, force inputs and outputs of active S boxes in the key schedule to arrange the similar local collisions after we pass through the active S boxes. But unfortunately, as we fix uh, inputs and outputs of active S boxes, it means that we fix uh, some information about the keys for which this pattern is valid. And uh, since we have to pass through five S boxes in the key schedule, each active S box will contribute with uh, a bit lower probability, not to the minus six, but to the minus seven. And we'll get a probability that for a given a pair uh, of keys with fixed difference, this trail will be valid. And for nine rounds, it becomes valid for one of 235 key pairs, unfortunately. But uh, there will be no more active S boxes in the key schedule till the beginning of AES, so the situation will be kept as is. We can, and now we have 10 S boxes for nine rounds. 14 S boxes for 12 rounds, and 19 S boxes for 14 rounds. Well, about colors, by the way, so the uh, same colors mean uh, same differences, and different colors mean different differences. <laughs> Sorry for the apology. And columns are linear expansions of <coughs> one byte differences. So the property is if you take a pair of plain texts with the differences that you fix and a pair of keys with the difference between them you fix. Therefore, one of 235 of them, the, uh, this pattern will be valid with probability two to the minus 119. This is much higher than the uh, uh, one over the number of keys because for a random difference probability will be two to the minus 256. And this allows to us to mount an attack uh, on the full AES, but the problem will be that we can attack not all, not every key pair with this difference, but only uh, one out of 35. And unfortunately, the conditions on this key pair are somewhere inside the key schedule, so they cannot be expressed as simple formulas on the original key bytes. There are only formulas on the key bytes uh, after several computations. And uh, all the other, our future works were based on this differential trail and its modifications. For example, we mounted, uh, well, we mounted a related key attack and the single key model and similar attacks in uh, open key model. We used it, so we, uh, we figured out later that uh, in the so-called chosen key model, when the key can be chosen, and the idea was to find some keys and plain text to satisfy some properties 
that exhibit some properties of this AES permutation uh, that show that it is uh, not so good as, as was expected. We show that uh, an attack with the much more practical complexity can be shown in this chosen key model. But uh, just for completeness, we provided also an attack in the secret key model when the idea, when the goal is to find a secret key. And uh, well, we are given a related key pair with the condition uh, from the differential trail. So the related key attack was quite simple after you get these differential trails. So you can encrypt and decrypt on k and k plus delta, and one out of two to 35 keys can be attacked with this differential trail. And the complexity after we detect the right key pair will be about two to the 96. But you will have to run a uh, longer procedure to detect this pair. And uh, in the next paper, we discovered just better attack on the AS256 in the same related key model, but with the boomerang. And in that uh, better attack, this condition on the number of keys, uh, it will be, it, it was removed. And we, will, we are now able to attack uh, any key, but uh, in the, in the related key model. And uh, next attack will be in the so-called chosen key model when we can uh, fix and choose a key in advance and show that for some keys or for some key pairs, the, perm the yes permutations or the family of permutations are not so good as expected. Uh, so uh, we will compare it to so-called ideal cipher that is a uh, relevant uh, notion for uh, people who are involved in the uh, more theoretical part of the cryptography. And uh, as you know, the ideal cipher is uh, typically used as a primitive in some provably secure constructions, for example, the Davis-Meyer construction. And uh, it can be modeled as uh, two oracles Encrypt, uh, encryption and decryption ones. And uh, the keys and plain texts are treated in the same way. So they are uh, both inputs. So for the encryption oracle, the key and plain text are inputs. For the decryption, the cipher text and the key are inputs. And uh, the permutations are chosen randomly. That's what we call an ideal cipher. And our goal was to show that uh, AES exhibit properties that uh, shouldn't exist for random permutation. And th therefore, uh, it shouldn't be used in provably secure construction. Because of course, every time that you instantiate an ideal cipher in a provably secure construction with some concrete cipher, the question is what properties, uh, are, what properties evolve. And we show that AES just uh, exhibit properties that are uncommon for an ideal cipher, and that's, and that's why uh, typically it shouldn't be used, uh, uh, a provable secure construction shouldn't be instantiated with AES-256. The properties, however, uh, are quite complicated because, of course, they are related uh, to the differential trail that we constructed. So I don't know what is simpler, so there are two uh, uh, the same definitions on the left and on the right. So the definition, in so the idea of the construction is uh, assume you have a fixed difference delta key and uh, you are going to construct Q plain texts and Q keys uh, up, uh, from Q1 to KQ, uh, Q from P1 to PQ and uh, you have to compute the ciphertext difference, which uh, so we first compute encrypt a plain text on the key and then uh, encrypt uh, the same plain text on the complement of the key and compute the ciphertext difference between them. And if you if the ciphertext difference is the same in all the computations, that uh, we call it a differential Q multi collision. And well, in the picture it looks like a prism. So in a formula, it looks like uh, a long condition. Yes? Sorry, in the picture, we should have F, we should have a sub delta K1, sub delta K2, and that equality at the bottom. Is that correct? Yeah, yes. 
Yeah, so yes, of course. So here, uh, uh, delta key. Right. It's not written, but it should. Yeah. Written. And the zeros are all different. Uh, no, delta key, no. delta key is fixed. Okay. But it's delta key one, uh, it's the same delta no, key it's everywhere. Same delta. The same delta key everywhere, and we even allow an attacker, so if you want an attack an ideal cipher, we allow you to choose any delta key. So we just ask you to construct it for an ideal cipher. So you choose any delta C, any delta key, but uh, we give you Q and ask, construct it for, please construct for an ideal cipher. And we just proved that for an ideal cipher, the uh, task is hard. So the proof is more or less similar to prove that the Davis Meyer is secure if it's an ideal cipher. And uh, it's something like Q times 2 to the n. And for AES, uh, this differential Q multi collision is actually a set of Q pairs that can form. The differential trail, well, not the same differential trail that we constructed, but a bit modified because we wanted uh, a zero difference in the plain text. But actually, we can allow a difference in the plain text as well, but it should be fixed in all the plain text, and the definition will be the same. And we proved that uh, such a set of Q pairs, this Q multi collision, can be found in com with complexity Q times to the 67, where the so called triangulation algorithm was, uh, which we introduced. Uh, in another paper, and since could, uh, since 267 is smaller than 2 to the 128, we claim that uh, AES and uh, is not sim is uh, shouldn't <coughs> AES and ideal cipher is a bit uh, are different. And uh, why we said that we have something practical? Well, 2 to the 67 is not so much practical. But the point is that we can actually relax some definitions here. For example, uh, the plain text may not be the plain text difference may not be equal, might not be equal uh, in all the bytes. But we can re relax the conditions, and of course the the complexity of uh, to construct this multi collision for an ideal cipher will be lower. It will not be two to the n, but uh, we proved that uh, we proved that. Uh, uh, if we relax half of the bytes, then we can, uh, for an ideal cipher to construct it, will take something like 2 to the 75 operations, while uh, the same for AES, we can construct on a PC, it's, it's construct, uh, the, probability, <laughs> the complexity is something like 2 to the 35. So the, uh, the definitions are not so beautiful, and uh, but uh, the point is that we can, uh, we can Show something practical. Well, yes. Two to the thirty-five is something you could actually do on a bunch of computers. Yes. Uh, yes. So it's sounds like the, we, we constructed this prism with the difference between plain texts and different. We, can, we construct all the set of keys and all the difference between keys, but uh, we lack several definitions, and now it no, doesn't look. Uh, as a good prism, but we proved that even with these relaxed conditions, it's still very hard for an ideal cipher, while for AES, it can be computed on a laptop. And the last part of my talk deals with boomerang attacks that are in a further improvement of uh, attacks, and all they are based on the differential trail that we constructed for AES-256 and for, uh, on its modification for AES-192. I will recall, I will, uh, I will say several uh, words about boomerangs, the principle of boomerang attacks. In boomerang attacks, uh, they work the best when you cannot uh, construct a differential for the whole cipher, but maybe you have good differential for its parts, for example, if you split a cipher into two parts, E0 and E1, and assume you have a good differential delta to delta star for the first part. Then the boomerang and a uh, good differential for the second part, but uh, it's not uh, depicted now, will be on the next slides. Then the, attacks, uh, the attack works as follows. So you en encrypt two plain text with fixed difference delta and uh, compute ciphertext C and C prime. With some, prob with the pro some probability, uh, in the middle, there will be difference delta star. 
But in the end, we don't know any di uh, we don't know uh, anything about the difference between C and C prime, and actually we don't need it. The attack uh, proceeds as follows: we XOR to both cipher texts a uh, fixed difference nabla. That will be the end of the second differential for the subcipher E1, and construct two new cipher texts D and D prime. And from uh, and then we ask uh, for decrypting of D and D prime. And now we look what happens if we decrypt D and D prime. It will be they will be decrypted to some plain text Q and Q prime. And uh, if nabla to nabla star is a differential for the second part E1, then with some probability uh, this difference will. Uh, be transformed in the backward direction to difference delta star, and this difference between C prime and D prime nabla will be transformed to nabla star as well. And then in the middle, you have a kind of square with uh, two sides, uh, already, three sides already computed. So we have uh, nabla star, nabla star, and delta star. The question is what are the fourth one? And due to properties of XOR, the fourth one uh, will be delta star with probability one. So if uh, the three uh, difference are uh, computed, then the fourth difference uh, is computed deterministically. And then, uh, with some probability again, this difference delta star will be computed to, will be transformed to difference delta between Q and Q prime. So we have uh, four differentials, one here, a second, third, and fourth, and all they contribute to the probability of this event. And if these probabilities are relatively uh, high, then uh, can, uh, after encrypting and decrypting, we get uh, several um, sufficiently many so-called quartets with difference, the same difference in the plain text. So you encrypt with delta, Compute something, decrypt, and again get delta. And this works as a distinguisher uh, in uh, differential-based attacks. So of course, they have also some disadvantages, because uh, due to four differentials instead of two, the complexity may be quite high. And in the related key model, the key relation may be even more complex. And of course, uh, the model is uh, uh, weaker because we assume, uh, we assume that adversary is much stronger because uh, uh, he, now he has uh, not even two related keys, but four related keys, one key per uh, every side of the boomerang. On the other hand, since you use uh, shorter differential trails, it may work for every key. And uh, we remove that condition one out of 235. Uh, it was in the first attack. And for ES uh, 256, it works. Uh, so here is the seven round trail for AES 256. The uh, first part that we computed with uh, uh, just, uh, we removed the S box layer from here. And we have only five active S boxes here. And uh, we duplicated and modify a bit. So we get so this is the trail for the uh, second part of the cipher. It's here, and for the first part of the cipher, it's quite similar. But uh, the row where local collisions are constructed is not the first row, but the second one. And uh, that's how we mount uh, the related key boomerang attack on the full AS two hundred fifty six with that two to the ninety nine dot five data and time complexity and memory to the 77. Well, you see that the differential trail in the very beginning is a bit different because uh, to mount a better attack, you usually relax some uh, conditions on, of, on differences. And here, green differences mark arbitrary differences. And uh, well, you don't work with pure differential trails, but you modify them to get a better complexity. Because if you use the differential, if you just duplicate it, you'll get an attack with complexity of like 2 to the 130. 
but if you modify the differential trail, you will get below 2 to the 100. For AS192, situation is similar, but uh, due to uh, higher diffusion in the key schedule, uh, faster diffusion in the key schedule, we had to apply a different, uh, an, another type of uh, boomerang attack, so-called amplified boomerang attack. It works as follows. It's a chosen plain text attack, uh, so you uh, do not have to decrypt anything, but it has a higher complexity due to the following. So assume you encrypt many, many uh, pairs, plain text pairs with difference delta, and uh, if there is a differential with a relatively high probability, there will be many pairs of them that will have difference delta star in the middle. And if uh, the number of them exceeds 2 to the 64, then uh, by the Birdie paradox, you will have a pair of pairs, a quartet, for which the difference between the middles will be this delta star. So if it's delta nabla star here, then it's nabla star here as well. <coughs> and uh, with, again, some probability, this will result in a difference nabla, two differences nabla between two, pair, two ciphertext pairs. Uh, and we again get a quartet, but a quartet of ciphertexts. So this attack is better uh, because we can allow some uh, we can relax conditions on ciphertexts because we can use so-called truncated dif differentials in the variant, but the complexity is higher, and that's why for AES-192, for which differential trail is constructed in a similar way, but key schedule is not so beautiful because uh, the key uh, state ratio is not an integer, and uh, related key boomerang Amplified boomerang attack on the full AS-102 requires quite a strong complexity, but still is a, it's a shortcut attack. It's faster than exhaustive search. Uh, 2 to 176 AS encryptions and uh, 2 to the 123 plain text. Almost the entire code book. Summarizing, the key idea was to use local collisions and uh, combine them with the slow backward diffusion in the key schedule and uh, to show that multi-collisions can be certificates of weakness of AS permutation compared to ideal cipher. And uh, using this differential trail, we constructed also a related key boomerang attack on uh, versions with 192 and 256-bit key. Uh, and this appear, uh, was published in our two papers in this crypt and Asia crypt. And uh, the differential trail was also used in the, our collaborative paper with Or and our colleagues that he talked yesterday. And thank you for your attention. <laughs> yes. How, is there any way to avoid the related key model? Well, avoid a related key model it means to avoid related keys in your protocols, in protocols uh, that use AES. And of course, your keys shouldn't be computed in the counter mode, for example, and in any other uh, predictable way. So, of course, key should be computed more or less randomly any time. And uh, what else? Uh, relative key model actually is used quite rarely because uh, real attacks, there are one, maybe two real attacks on real applications, this on web, where related keys were used. And Honestly, we do not expect attacks on protocols that use AES, some practical attacks with uh, extensions of our results. However, uh, it means that if you construct something based on AES, it means the key schedule is not so good. 
And as you may notice, that SHA-3 candidates hash functions that are based on AES, no all of them use key schedule of AES as is. They modify it. Maybe do not explicitly explain in why, but uh, the key schedule uh, of AES is not, was used only once. And uh, most of these message schedules provide much uh, higher uh, diffusion, much faster diffusion, and higher nonlinearity, and uh, much better mixing. And for them, this related key or collision attack steps are not possible. So is there a way, given, given a protocol, to prove a lower bound on any related key or parameters? Oh, good question because there are of course some trivial key relations for for example key relation may not be a bijection for example there can be several pairs with the second same second element at that moment i cannot formulate about lower bounds are there any of the candidates for shot three do they provide an argument for why the related key attack doesn't work Well, they, I think there were some local collisions uh, are quite unprobable in our hash functions because of this and this. But they just uh, use the fact that local collisions were in attack on hash functions. Of course, they do not. Uh, they do not have to look at these papers because they are application to block ciphers. While these ideas for hash functions uh, is in use for a long time. What do you mean one way it's invertible? Uh, well, it's something you don't know the state, right? So imagine if, like, um, you know, uh, I guess what I'm getting at is, do you think there's some middle ground, right, where we could say, okay, um, here's something I can assume about AES, yeah, so what's the reason that didn't work? And if it's also allowed for us to have these bad properties, we still use it. It means that you shouldn't allow to manipulate the key yeah. as freely as you can manipulate plain texts. Because if you instantiate some probably secure constructions, usually key and plain text are used in, uh, you can predict how they are used. Right. So if you use a yes somewhere else, fix the key or do something. Any ideas about attacking a yes outside the related key model? S still not, still not. Because uh, if the key is fixed, I, I think quite uh, much effort was put on investigating properties. You know, the designers are still publishing papers about properties on AES internal yeah, transformations. I mean, basically, the papers say you know, linear attacks and differential attacks are not. Possible. Well, they were they proved that they are not possible in the submission, and later they were invented and improved square integral multi-set attacks and. Uh, the result of everything of that was to show uh, nobody showed some properties for five rounds, for example. Uh -huh. There was no property for five rounds. Yeah, so all the, I mean, if you take a list of the standard attacks and try to do, run it against AES and the non related key model, you're not going to get anywhere. And you, but no clue about another kind of attack. Yes, so actually, um, almost no breakthrough attack in the block cipher was introduced, I mean, well, Boomerang was a breakthrough right. when it was designed, but after that, nothing. nothing. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.